So we've been back home after our first training session in, uh, in Utah, learning to fly a gyro. And I have to admit, like we've been home for probably a week and a half now, I can't wait to get back into uh, the aircraft and learn to do the takeoffs and landings and really master the, uh, the aircraft. Uh, but I have to say I'm looking forward to getting down to Utah again where the temperature, at least today, is going to be about 15 degrees warmer because it's unseasonably cool here in the Okanagan at the moment. The feeling that I have actually is I think I'm mastering it better even than the last time I was up flying just because I've been able to reflect on it so much. So I'm thinking, okay, I've been practicing, so what do I do? Airspeed control and, and uh, ascending and descending. I, I now know intellectually what I need to do. So I was able to get to the point where um, we were doing some really slow speed flying actually, which was great. So I was learning to control and fly the gyro down to 35 knots, which is really, uh, it's pretty cool actually. And uh, I'm just literally looking at how the gyroplane would react in slow speed flight. We did a, a little bit of training on, really it's not a stall, but what happens to a gyroplane, let's say we get uh, a little bit too enthusiastic to stretch out or run into the runway, and we end up literally flying too slowly for the gyroplane to stay in the air. Well, what actually happens is the gyroplane will fall vertically out of the sky. And that, obviously that's not good if you're close to the runway. Uh, so we did some recovery from that extremely slow flight. And we did the same thing. So that's like power off and, and reducing the speed that we fly at. If you, if you look back, if, or if I reflect back on where we were and I had my first logbook entry and then all the way up to uh, about seven hours, I think, in, in the logbook at the end of the first session, and I've learned airspeed control and how to ascend and descend. We've gone over a couple of loops around the airport, and which is takeoffs and landings. And then finally, what was very cool is to do maneuvers around a point. So we would pick a point on the ground and we would do a 360 degree circle around that point keeping it in the same reference position on the aircraft. So you'll see in the video running behind you that I'm actually looking out of the window to my left or to my right and focusing that particular point on a, a piece of the window, literally, or on my passenger's neck or nose or whatever it might have been and referencing it in that same position to determine how far away we are from that point and how fast we're turning at any particular point in time. Uh, but I certainly feel that I have um, probably a 90% control of, um, of the aircraft maneuvers and rolling and making turns and, and that sort of thing. I came back knowing that I could fly the gyroplane through the air. Uh, the next bit to master is how to take off and, and land. So one of the things that is going to be a, a, a big question for us is so we're doing the, the pilot tra uh, training and hopefully somewhere in the next four to five weeks we will actually be pilots in a gyro and then the next big thing is we need to get a gyro over to our hometown airport here in Kelowna and so we contacted AirPro in uh, Quebec City which is the uh, Canadian distributor for auto gyros and said well we're, we're looking to get a gyro over to, uh, to British Columbia to the other side of Canada and uh, it would be great if you sort of have one in your, in your showroom, so to speak. He said, well, guys, it doesn't quite work like that. Like, there is a four-month lead time. These gyroplanes are being built custom for your specs and whatnot. So you need at least four months and then another four to eight weeks for um, registration and shipping out of Germany, etc. So we found ourselves in a bit of a pickle in terms of timing to get our aircraft here and to be able to make hours and fly people around and whatnot.